note that he's in the he was in the form of God, Morphe, and again he's in the form of a servant, and he's in form. Some translations schemati, translating the Greek there in form as well, like a man. So they're all uh, synonymous, right? He was in in the form of God, in the form of a servant, in the like every every person. ESV Bible study says. Or study Bible, right? Yeah. Form could also be reference to Christ being the ultimate image of God, the exact imprint of His nature. Hebrews one three. It might also refer to the fact that He is the visible expression of God's invisible glory. Again, we're back to the situations that while He was on Earth. That's why Jesus said, if you see me, you see who? God the Father. He's obvious, unless you're oneness, he's obviously not saying he's God the Father. That would be actually an old heresy uh, called patripationism, but where, the God, where God the Father suffers and dies, and that's totally even outside the norm of Trinitarianism. So it simply means he was in the form of God, compared this like God, or God's, in Genesis 3, 5, 22. So compared to the first Adam, who was, who, who uh, wanted to be like God, and that uh, he emptied himself in form like a man, that is, of the fall, in the, in the instance of the first Adam. So form there is uh, synonymous with image, the character of God, is the visible expression of God. Let's look at another verse that might uh, be difficult. Uh, this is from the horrible International Standard Version. A mortal man becoming in human form he chose to be. Now that's just a huge, uh, weird paraphrase. Mm -hmm. More naturally read as a reference, so this should more naturally be read as a reference to Jesus' procreation by the virgin birth. That is, he's born. Note some translations do get this right. They make a reference to his birth as a man, or, or not as a man in terms of he became man, but in human. You know, he was a human being. Remember, Hebrews does say that he was made like us. Right in all respects, except in sin, he wasn't a, a sinner. So the RSVK, I think, do capture the the connection to the birth. Oh, what's that verse saying, yours? In verse seven, the second part. Or no, the last part of the verse seven. Uh, and being made in the likeness of men. Right, being made in the likeness of men could be a reference to his birth instead of some you know, Incarnation, capital I, uh, reading there. Uh, Benson commentary. The expression born in the likeness of men does not imply that Christ had only the appearance of a man, docetism, for the word yeah. likeness, see Adam, Genesis 5, 3, to beget a son in his own likeness after his image, and Christ, Hebrews 2, 14 to 17, or in the likeness of men may mean in the likeness of sinful men, as it is expressed in Romans 8, 3. Though without sin, Hebrews 4, 15. So you have all, all those uh, choices mm -hmm. to rely on. Let's talk about this verse in relation to Isaiah's suffering, so-called suffering servant. So let's go to uh, Isaiah 52. It says, Behold my servant will prosper. He will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted, just as many were astonished at you, my people. So his appearance, so now it goes from um, corporate Israel, goes from talking about Israel as the nation to an individual, right? So it talks about his appearance being marred more than any man, his form more than the sons of men, or, or other human beings, sons of men. Thus he will sprinkle many nations. It's interesting reference maybe to the uh, power of the uh, blood of the cross. Mm -hmm. Kings will shut their mouths on account of him. Uh, for what had not been told them, they will see, and what they had not heard, they will understand. For righteous himself, 
used this scripture against Celsus in his famous against Celsus work, chapters 54, 55, 3rd century AD. Now I remember that on one occasion at a disputation held with certain Jews who were reckoned wise men, I quoted these prophecies to which my Jewish opponent replied that these predictions bore reference to the whole people regarded as one individual. Your form shall be of no reputation among men, Philippians 2.7. Now it's interesting, Origen quotes it this way because that's actually not what uh, verse 7 actually says in most translations. So mm. I don't know what he might have been reading there, but I actually I think he might have been reading, he might have created a mishmash between the Isaiah passages and maybe Philippians 2 there. But you can also check the KJV, the received text. That might be. Anyway, the, the reason this is an interesting is because of the no reputation uh, language there. And his form had no reputation. 